Hello friends, I just wanted to take a few minutes today uh, to talk about shipping properly. That's something that people have uh, talked in threads about a lot um, and talked and shared tips and tricks, but um, I haven't seen a lot of comprehensive guides. So I figured I'd just go ahead and make a video. Now, what spurred me on and convinced me to go ahead and do that today well, I bought a misprint, and unfortunately, I think it may have been a, someone who hasn't sold a whole lot of cards online, because I received it, and it was basically hanging out of the, the top loader like so. And unfortunately, the result of that, this, this piece was just folded up, and stuck in a number 10 envelope. And the result of that, this in just a loose penny sleeve, and the result, if you can see here, if it'll zoom, the corner got crushed, the card itself got warped, it's kind of an S-shaped, and then the other corner got uh, dinged up pretty bad as well. The whole thing's pretty damaged, you know, I paid um, a pretty good premium for this card and the whole thing's pretty pretty dinged up on the corners where it was mint when it was sold, when it was sent. Um, so in a lot of cases you would see people asking for uh, at least a partial refund for something like this and if you're a seller you don't want to run into that. So what I'm going to do is instead of asking for refunds or anything like that I'm going to go ahead and take this and use it as an opportunity to make some content. So um, just to go ahead and get on into it, I have a couple of things to ship um, to my friend Peter Red Elk here um, because we have a couple of merfolk going to what Italy, something like that. Um, so, what do you need to ship? Um, I'll put a list in the uh, comments. You're going to need inner sleeves. You're going to need outer sleeves. You're going to need top loaders or semi-rigid card holders. You're going to need either short security envelopes or 5x7 bubble mailers. You're going to need scotch tape, maybe a pen or a sharpie. You're going to want an account with a shipping company or stamps. You're going to want a home printer uh, or and paper, scissors, and packing tape, or a label printer that's compatible with your shipping account. And then if you're shipping a lot of stuff, um, you may want to get a, uh, uh, a label printer. And then if you're shipping a bunch of stuff, you probably want to uh, have a, a kitchen scale or a precision shipping scale. A kitchen scale works just fine. Um, so starting off, um, the way that I start, make sure I get this here. Your inner sleeves, I use the KMC Perfect Fits. This one's actually been in the this one, so it, it's not hard to get in there. Um, I put those in upside down. You can start it the other way, it doesn't matter. What matters is that when you put it in the outer sleeve, that it goes the other way. Reason being is that you put the open end towards the open end and when you're done, you have, squish the air out, and you have a somewhat airtight, watertight seal here. So if water moisture gets in here, it's not going to affect the card inside as much. Now, no, there are no guarantees in life, um, but what we're doing here is we're taking some cheap, and easy steps to make sure that your product gets there with as little damage as possible. It doesn't, it takes another, you know, I use, these are uh, BCW outer sleeves. You can get uh, packs of 500 on Amazon for like 25 bucks. It's not expensive. Um, you can use the uh, clear, for shipping, you can use like the clear Ultra Pro uh, crummy ones that are even cheaper. They're like 500 for 18 bucks. 
Um, and you can use cheaper inner sleeves if you want. I wouldn't because they're often bad size fits, and if they're too small, then they can cause it. They can be. They can cause it to warp. Uh, if they're too small, it'll it'll cause a, a bend. Um, but this is the first way to start off: is that you have a nice, uh, somewhat airtight, watertight start. You can fit two of these in a top loader. I usually put them back to back, just for the sake of when the person opens them up, they can see what's in there. Um, you want to use either a top loader or one of these rigid or semi-rigid card holders I'd say save your semi-rigids for sending in to uh, get stuff graded because that's what they want. Also, um, had one of these left over. Save your penny sleeves. That stuff's garbage. Don't use them. Um, that's a good way for things to slide around and cause surface damage. You don't want things moving around inside the sleeve. That is surface damage waiting to happen. So there's a couple ways to do this. Now, if you don't use an inner sleeve, you must put the top side down in your top loaders. If you did use an inner sleeve, it doesn't matter as much. Um, because this one is going to make a longer trip, and because I'm double sleeving, I'm just going to go ahead and do one per top loader here. I also have plenty of top loaders, I don't mind. I'm also going to go the extra mile because I'm going to tape these two top loaders together to give a little bit of extra rigidity. Now something I know from shipping a lot is that um, your first class package, which is what you send your bubble mailers, will accept up to uh, three ounces, which is way more than this, uh, before they start charging you extra on weight. Now this is actually going to go in an envelope uh, because they didn't pay for the extra bubble mailer. That's the reason. The other reason that I'm doing two of these. Now, the other thing that you need to know is if you are doing um, bubble, or if you're if you're doing a an envelope. Do yourself and everybody else a favor and send it non-machinable. If you are sending USPS in a number six security envelope, security envelope, so that they can't see what's in it, it has the markings on the inside. It's no more expensive than a regular envelope. You just have to know what to look for. Um, and a number six, so that it's not all that much bigger rather than having all this extra room to flop around in a number 9 or a number 10. Um, also, do yourself a favor and take the extra moment to make a little tab on the end of the piece of tape that you're going to seal the top with that way, they have a nice little thing to grab onto there that's really easy for them to pull that top piece of tape off with. It just makes it easier for them to deal with. Now, on the last part, on this envelope, taking one more piece of tape, and invisible tape is not expensive. I just used about eight cents worth. No big deal. Maybe if that. I took a little piece and I'm going to fold it up here. And I'm going to press it. Now this is assuming I put the, the uh, information on there already. This is for your benefit. Um, I press it against there so that if I shake this, it's not coming out. Something that I've heard, I don't know how many times, is uh, people talking about um, someone sent their card uh, in, in just a plain white envelope, and in shipping, it got torn open. Well, 
it still had the information on it, but it fell out. Well, if it had had one little piece of tape in there, it may have made it the rest of the way, but it got torn open. Um, so one little piece of tape might mean that that little tear is fine and it makes it the rest of the way. Um, your postal employees will often see if they see a tear, they'll tape it right back up if they see a tear. Um, so consider that one more piece of tape here. Now I'm not saying go nuts with tape because that's another big complaint that I hear is people going absolutely overboard on tape. Too much tape is bad. The other thing is if it is just packing tape everywhere, packing tape city, where you're having to use a knife or trying to pry the whole thing apart, um, someone's going to have to damage their cards to get them out. And you don't want that to happen because even though you didn't damage the card, if someone has to risk damaging their card to get it out, that's bad news. So moving on to part two of uh, shipping how-tos on how to safely and effectively ship your cards. Um, now we're moving on to um, bubble mailers. So if you're shipping safely, you're really wanting to send in poly bubble mailers. You can get paper bubble mailers, but the poly bubble mailer is going to be better. It's going to be slightly more water resistant. Also, um, buy in bulk. Um, I bought when I was shopping for these, um, the pricing was something like 20 bucks for 10 of them or 30 bucks for 20 of them. And then I ended up paying, I think, 100 bucks for, f or 80 bucks for 500 of them or something like that. And that was years ago and I've still got a giant pile of them. So just buy in bulk if you're gonna be using them. It's cheaper that way. Um, and then the inside looks like so. It's just bubble wrap on the inside. Use the same techniques. You will still use your little piece of tape to, to secure that to the inside. The difference here is you're going to, instead of just putting, um, uh, instead of just putting a stamp, and I, I should have gone back and mentioned, um, on your plain envelopes, you can add a one ounce stamp and write non-machinable on the regular envelope envelope and they won't run it through the machines they'll hand sort it um, and that will save everyone a lot of trouble i bought a stamp that says non-machinable for like eight bucks saves me a lot of time anyway moving right along for this guy you're going to want to get an account uh, with either i use shippo um, it's not an endorsement, it's just the one that doesn't have a monthly fee so that if I don't use it for a month, I don't feel like I'm wasting my money. You can use stamps.com or, or any number of other um, shipping services. Um, and you can use a home printer where you print out something like this. I'm going to cover up the names. But you basically end up with something like this um, that you can... Uh, then cut out and use a, a moderate amount of packing tape to affix to the front of this and just drop it off at the post office or a post office drop. Um, if you are using a, if you're, if you're shipping a large number of these, you may wanna look at spending 100 to 150 bucks and getting just a label printer. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but you have to, ex you have to ask yourself, what is my time worth? Um, then the last part of it is after you've done your whole thing. Um, if you're doing this a lot, you probably want a kitchen scale. Same kind of thing that you measure ingredients with. Or um, other people might have it for other more crimey reasons. Um, and you can just set it to ounces and there you go. Um, your standard first class package is good for up to three ounces without increasing the price. Um, so there's the basics. 
um, on how how to ship effectively, um, save yourself a little bit of money. The way that I ship is I I cover the first dollar or so uh, of say materials and shipping fee. So if I'm if I'm shipping in a plain envelope, um, it'll cost me about a buck uh, for the shipping altogether, and I'll cover the top loaders and the envelope because that's not really a whole lot. Um, if I'm upgrading to the tracking, that will end up saving me time and trouble later. So I usually charge about three bucks. It actually costs me about three, somewhere between three twelve and three fifty. Uh, for the tracking uh, first class package plus cost of materials but I write that off as uh, less hassle and I believe it comes with some amount of insurance um, so it just lets me give people tracking numbers it's a little bit I, I can say here's your tracking number I'm done with it if they ask me I can say look at your tracking number does it show delivered um, so some things to go over, um, double sleeving, be sure you're double sleeving, um, that'll help you reduce uh, potential moisture damage. Um, it costs you nothing to point the open end down if you're not double sleeving, but you should be double sleeving. Um, taping your top loaders together costs you very little tape, um, it's easy to do. Be sure you're using your little tab there, it makes people's life easier rather than them having to get a knife out and trying to cut if they're trying to cut their cards free then you've done something wrong as a person who is shipping something um, don't just tape two cards loose between two top loaders um, I asked some people what their biggest pet peeves are and apparently it's very common for people to just tape two top loaders together and just shove a bunch of cards between them and use this as a vice like device to um, <laughs> to to keep their cards between, but apparently that makes them uh, slide around, and then some will end up sticking to the tape on the side. Um, it ends up bending cards. It's not good. Um, don't just put. The other thing that I heard a lot of and has happened to me is people will just take a loose card or a card in a sleeve and just throw it in an envelope and put a stamp on it and good luck and and just lick it and goodbye don't do that please don't do that it's if you don't have the products to ship then you shouldn't be shipping if you're unaware um, don't be scared to ask the person that you're shipping to how would you like that shipped um, I would rather have someone say I don't know how to ship that than have them guess especially as I do where I deal with misprints and a lot of these are Things that might well be one and one of a kind. Um, I'll leave it with a story. I bought a card, and I won't say which one it was. I bought a card that is one of very few in the world. It is a showpiece. It is one of the few where people see it, and I get, oh my goodness, where did you get that? How did you get that? I didn't know that existed. That's amazing. Uh, and whenever I see it, Whenever people talk about it, I'm always reminded, hmm, that was sent to me sandwiched between two pieces of cardboard with about 20 or 30 feet of packing tape and just shoved in the other country's equivalent of a, uh, <laughs> a small flat rate box and it was absolutely damaged in shipping. And you don't wanna see that when it's one of just a few in the world. Um, in those cases, even if it is insured, what are you gonna do about it? Get another one? You can't, they don't exist. So money back is only so much consolation when you would rather just have the original thing in good shape. Um, so anyway, um, 
I will put back, I'll put the list of, of materials that I suggest. If you have questions, feel free to put them in, in comments um, and I will answer them in uh, the time that I have. If you have suggestions for other videos that you'd like to see me talk about, um, feel free to suggest that also in comments. You can find me um, at mountain underscore king underscore auth on, I believe, Instagram, and then I think it's just auth underscore king on Twitter uh, because of the way that Twitter wants to limit it. Anyway, um, you, those links will be in the uh, description of this video. Thank you for joining me. If you have questions, again, let me know. Hope you have enjoyed the discussion topic today. Thanks.